Today, it's more Project Old School. Big new power up front means it's time to upgrade the rear end gears. Then, we're making our own custom exhaust and test fitting our new bed and body panels. Finally, we'll pick the perfect wheel and tire combo. It's all here today on Trucks. Hey, welcome to Trucks and the rejuvenation of our 53 F100. We're keeping the classic look of the truck, but throwing some old school hot rod style at it. When we started, we'd found someone in the past had welded on a 69 Nova front clip. Now, they did a really good job, so we decided to keep it and add an air suspension that'll ride great and handle even better. Besides, this is not gonna be a nut and bolt restoration. This is gonna be more of a street rod. For power, we bolted a cool looking Edelbrock top end kit on an O'Reilly small block bottom end. This should be good for an easy 440 horses. Now with all that new muscle up front, a stock rear end can be a weak link. But the good news is that under the bed we found a GM 10 bolt rear end with an 8.5 inch ring gear. Now this is a good start, but we can't leave it alone. It's an open differential, which means power only gets to one wheel at a time. Plus, it's a 308 gear, which is better for the highway than hot rodding. Not only that, we told Boulder we wanted to match their tranny with a 373 gear ratio for better acceleration. So we went to Superior Axle and Gear and picked up their 373 ring gear and pinion set. We also picked up a rebuild kit that comes with gaskets, bearings, spacers, shims, ring gear bolts, a new crush sleeve, everything you need to rebuild your rear end. Then we put in a call to Auburn and got one of their high performance limited slip differentials. Now you know when you go around a corner, your wheels need to turn at different speeds. That's because the outside wheel covers more ground and has to turn faster. A limited slip uses clutches on the inside to allow one wheel to slip for really smooth cornering, while at the same time is allowing big power to both rear wheels under acceleration on a straight road. Now after you get the cover off the rear end, be sure and check for water or metal shavings in your gear loop, because if you got those, you got bigger problems. First, unbolt the main caps, then extract the cross shaft bolt, the cross shaft, and then the spider gears. And with the spider gears out, the C-clips come out next with a little bit of help from an extra set of hands. Hit it, Paul. Ready? Yeah, ready. Go pull it. There you go. Ah, nice and clean. All right. After you get the carrier out, keep track of where your shims go. These will need to go back in the same location. You may have to use a little force to get the pinion out, but after that, you're ready to move on. The first thing we're going to do is press a new bearing onto our new pinion. Slide the shim into place, and then the bearing. And here's a trick. Take your old bearing, cut the cage off, turn it upside down, and it automatically becomes a perfect seat to press your new bearing in place without damaging the cage or the rollers. Then we'll press the new bearings on our differential. And if you don't have a press, you can go to a machine shop and they'll do it for you. Back at the truck, We'll add a new race, a new bearing, and a new seal to the rear end housing. And be sure to slip the crush sleeve on the pinion before it goes in and the yoke goes on. As you tighten the pinion nut, you'll collapse the crush sleeve. So stop and check for play as you tighten. Stop when you feel almost no play on the yoke. Now the crush sleeve we put on our pinion acts like a spring. It preloads the bearing. You don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose. So we're gonna measure it with an inch pound torque wrench, zeroed out, and we'll give it one rotation to measure the correct drag of the bearing or the preload of the bearing. And right there, 25 inch pounds. That's just about perfect. Slide the ring gear onto the differential and torque the ring gear bolts to 70 foot pounds. With the new differential in place, don't forget to replace the original shims. 
Then bolt your main caps back in place and torque them down. We'll use a dial indicator to check the three plate between the pinion and the ring gear. You want to see between 8 and 12 thousandths clearance to allow for gear expansion and lubrication. Some gear paint on the teeth will help you make sure the pinion gear meshes in the center of the ring gear. There it is. Finally, reinstall your axles, C-clips, and your cross shaft. With our new gears and posi in place, we can button this rear end up. But our old dry shaft is not going to fit with a new longer bowler transmission. So we're going to take measurements for a new one while we're on the brake. And when we get back, we're going to make a custom exhaust just for our F100 old school. Don't go anywhere. Hi, right, welcome back to Trucks and our clipped, slamming, jamming 53 F100 that we've nicknamed Old School. We've just converted our 10 bolt rear end from a peg leg burnout king to a fully automatic limited slip setup. Now we're at one of the easiest steps, bolting on the exhaust. But what do you do when you got a truck like ours? It's got a Nova clip, full GM running gear under the facade of a Ford F100. There is no bolt on kit. Well, that's when you got to rely on good old fashioned hot rodding and your own ingenuity. So we decided to go with Magnaflow's stainless steel universal hot rod system. It comes with these mandrel bent sections that allow you to create pretty much any angle that you want, collectors, sections of straight pipe, and all the mounting hardware that you need. Now Magnaflow also offers accessories like these stainless tips to cap off your system and these high flow mufflers that with a stainless steel finish are going to look as good as they sound. And we're getting the best of both worlds of Sanderson's ceramic coated cast iron exhaust headers for great airflow and good heat dissipation. Several things you need to be aware of when you're routing a custom exhaust system. The first thing is ground clearance. So if we route our pipes here above the lowest point of this cross member, we're going to be fine. Now you also want to be aware of your steering linkage. You want to make sure you can go peak to peak or lock to lock turns without any interference to your drag link or your tie rod ends. And as you can see, it's a pretty tight squeeze in here. From the header, we'll make a down tube and work our way back. And this 90 degree bend from the kit is a perfect place to start. We've tacked our whole right bank section in place with a MIG welder right up until here where the muffler connects. Now I could go ahead and finish this seam with the MIG, but the problem with that is that it's a regular steel wire and it'll eventually rust. This is stainless steel tubing, so what we're going to do is take a TIG and go ahead and do a nice fusion weld on this seam and make it one continuous piece. Now this is the finished pipe section. It's going to look great sitting up underneath the truck. And one thing's for sure, that this joint looks better than this big old pipe clamp sitting on top of it. Now obviously this represents a significant investment in time smoothing out these welds, but we're going to show you just exactly how we got there. Now I'm going to start out with the DA sander set to spin using 220 grit paper. Now all I'm trying to do is level out this fusion weld, which is already pretty level to start with. <laughs> Now I'll use another piece of 220 and I'll sand this way in a back and forth or linear fashion. Next, we switch to a red scuffing pad, which is equal to about 600 grit. And look at that. With three steps, you can make a huge difference. Makes a beautiful satin stainless steel finish. All right, we've got our mufflers installed. Now we could install these really nice tips, but there's only one problem. It's blowing the hot exhaust right into our airbags and that's not good. So what we decided to do was take some extra pipe from our kit and make our own special turndowns. This avoids all that hot exhaust blowing into our airbags. With our exhaust system finished up, our drivetrain pretty much in place, now we can finally pay attention to this 50-year-old bodywork, starting with what's missing here, the bed. Maybe even make a few improvements, so stick around. Up next, we're adding a brand new bed and some big fat fenders worthy of Project Old School. 
Hi, welcome back. We are so close to reaching our goal of making Old School a really cool daily driver. And it's going to turn a lot of heads. Now, we finished the exhaust and the driveline. Now it's time to work on the old body. Like this bed, for instance. From 10 feet away, it looks pretty good. But you get a little closer, it gets a little rougher. So we decided to wipe the slate clean and get a brand new bed kit from Pro's Pick. It's almost an identical version of the original Ford bed with the rolled sides. It's epoxy primed, ready for paint, and very straight. Pro's Pick also has original looking tailgates, but we wanted a custom look. So we got their flat gate with the cool hidden latches and straps. We're also going to use their LED lights that fit into the bed rolls and really clean up the look of the back of this truck. We want to put some serious tires under the back of this truck and tuck them up underneath the fenders while we got it laid out. Yeah, you can widen the stock steel fenders, but you're setting yourself up for a ton of work. Well, Bebops has been making quality replacement parts for these trucks for a long time, and they've come up with these cool three-inch wider F100 fenders that'll fit your stock truck as well as our pro's pick bed. But here's the problem. Where do you start? I mean, there's no holes drilled. This is not the original bed. We don't even have brackets to help us even get close to where we're supposed to be. But you gotta start somewhere. So you want to find a common point of reference, something that ties the new panels to the old panels. And on this truck, it's this paint line. We know for certain that the old fender went right up against there. So we'll take our new panel, lay it up in place, right up where the other one was. And we'll clamp this guy in place and work our way back. Next, we're going to snug our new running boards up against our fenders where we know they're going to fit. With those running boards in place, now come the rear fenders. Bebops makes both panels, and they've done a real nice job of helping us out here with this relief cutter, this notch that's molded into the fender, and it sits right on the running board. It shows us exactly where that rear fender goes on the front. Well, as you can see, the new bodywork looks great, but it just shows us how bad we need some new wheels and tires. Man. Now that's an understatement. Well, we'll take care of that when we get back from the break. So don't go anywhere. Let's take this one right here. Fat fenders need fat oh, tires. Mopar. That's fat spelled P-H-A-T. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to Trucks. Today, we've turned a major corner on Project Old School with new rear gears, stainless steel exhaust, and some brand new body panels. Now we can finally start to pay attention to details like attitude and stance. And a major part of that is a new set of wheels and tires. No matter what size tire we decide to go with, we still want to get that retro vibe. So we decided to go with Coker tires. As you can see, not only do they remanufacture vintage wheels and tires for antique vehicles, but they make tires with the latest technology that still have a retro style. But before you pick one out, you need to know what your backspace and your offset is. So why is backspace and offset important? Well, you don't want your tires to rub the inside of the wheelhouse or the inside of your fender lip. And backspace is what helps determine where that wheel sits inside your wheelhouse. Here's how you measure backspacing. Take a straight edge and lay it across the bead of your wheel, preferably without a tire on it so you get a true and accurate measurement. Then you take a tape measure, measure from the back of the wheel flange to the bottom of the straight edge. And you can see we've got a five and a quarter inch backspace on this rim. Now offset is the relationship of the back of this flange to the center of the wheel. We've got a nine inch wheel, so our center point is four and a half inches. Now we already know we've got a five and a quarter inch backspace which is right here. So our offset is three quarters of an inch. Positive offset means the hub is kicked to the outside. Negative offset is the hub is kicked to the inside. This is obviously kicked to the outside, so we've got a three quarter inch positive offset. Now you're gonna need to know this when you're figuring out just how much wheel and tire you can fit under your fender. And I'll show you an easy way to do that. Start by taping a plumb line to the inside edge of the wheelhouse and another one to the outside edge. Now we can take a measurement and that shows us that we've got 13 inches of clearance to play with. 
if you subtract a half inch off either side for sidewall clearance, we could fit a 12 inch wide tread up in there. Now, I've also attached the straight edge to the hub flange and with our half inch of clearance, that tells us so we can have a maximum of five inches of backspace with our new wheels. But ugly. I'm bad. <laughs> Not enough backspace. Paul. Mopar. Now we're getting close. Yeah. Now I'm getting really psyched. Because you can see what this truck's going to look like. Super cool. So we can start massaging some life back into the body and then focus on some style. Now that's a great idea. Wow. Nowadays, it seems like everything's going digital, and that includes your torque wrench. This is Matco Tools' new electronic torque wrench. All you do is just set the torque level you want. We'll pick about uh, 30 pounds in our case. The digital display shows you the torque and a yellow LED lets you know when you're close. The green LED and beep tells you you're on target. And if you go over, well, it'll tell you that too. It's available in a 3 8 inch, 100 foot pound model and a 1 half inch, 250 foot pound model. You can own your own Matco electronic torque wrench by going to matcotools.com and it's only gonna run you about 360 bucks. As much as we love our trucks, sometimes traction can be a problem, especially with an empty bed. There's just not enough weight over the rear axle. So you can throw a bunch of stuff in the back like sandbags or cinder blocks, but under hard braking or cornering, your load can shift around and bang the heck out of the sides, beat it all up. Well, here's a great solution to that. This is the SureTrax. It's a super strong, heavy duty bladder that you fill with water and it lays in the bed of your truck, adding about 350 pounds of evenly distributed weight over the rear tires. Baffling keeps the water from sloshing around and you can still use the bed to haul stuff because you could throw over 500 pounds on top of this thing and not damage it. The full size version of the SureTrax goes for about 150 bucks. And if you need to add weight to the back of your truck, this is a great way to go. Hey, thanks for watching trucks. See you next week.